Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy David at the Irish Gate. Ireland's number, Ireland's number one sports fan, bringing you the review of yesterday's game uh, v Ludo Gretz with Charlie T H S C and Matty Hayes. How are you keeping, lads? Good, good. Yeah, yeah. To be here. Yeah, yeah. Good as yeah. always. Thanks, thanks for having me on, David. And yeah, I'll be going. I'll be doing a live stream with you guys later on my um, uh, on my channel. So make sure stay tuned for that. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you look out for it. It'd be, it'd be a good show. Mm. Also, if you like the content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Now, look, lads, we'll get into it. Look, it was 3-3 last night. Um, look, a lot of fans were unhappy with the performance last night, but at the end of the day, it's job done. We're out of the group. And um, as 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 we were talking off air there, um, Charlie was saying that, um, look, it doesn't matter. We still have to go and beat Antwerp in the final game of the group to get out top and hopefully avoid a draw of one of them Champions League teams dropping down. So it is important that we finish top. Um Look, lads, it was very disappointing yesterday. Um, for me, Joe Hart had had an af- absolute disaster class. Um, Sanchez is a player now for me. I don't want to see him in the Spurs mm-hmm. shirt anymore. Um, look, Doherty is a player that we, um, especially because the Irish connection, I've stuck my neck out on the line for him. I know you have Matty as well, and um, yeah. at the moment, it's just not working out. Um, look, what do you make on the games last night, lads? We'll start with you first, Matty. Look, it was it was dreadful. <laughs> there's, there's no beating around the bush with that one. I mean, we're playing a, a team who are in a much lesser league than us. Are just a much worse team. We had three shots on target. Uh, very, very lucky we managed to put three of those in the back of the net, and very lucky we managed to get two penalties. Uh, the first one I think was a penalty, but it, it was a bit harsh. You know, his, his arm was really close to his body. I, I wouldn't say it was in too much of an unnatural position, but I think we got lucky. A bit lucky that one was given. The second was Stonewall. Uh, they just looked more dangerous on the attack. They looked more solid in defence. They looked better in possession. They looked uh, more uh, effective in the press. They were just better than us in every department, which is, which is really concerning. But look, I, I said it last night. In the period that we're in right now, when we have games like City, Chelsea, Arsenal, uh, Liverpool, whatever, it's it's these kind of dead rubber games against Lask that we, if, if we had to pick a game where we had a bad performance, I think this would have been the top of our list because, you know, I, I, like as you said, we still have to beat Antwerp. You know, that doesn't change anything. Yeah. Um, but look, having said that, you want to see your team win every game, and last night just wasn't good enough. Joe Hart, I think, has to say those first two goals. Matt Doherty just wasn't good enough. Uh, Lacelso was non-existent. The, there yeah. wasn't uh, enough cohesion in that front line. I, I think it, it it went wrong from back to front, from start to finish. And uh, I think Mourinho has a right to be quite frustrated with what he saw. Uh, and yourself, Charlie. Yeah, look, it's, um, I completely agree with what Matt said. It just wasn't good enough yesterday. Lask, we knew before the game that they had to win to sort of stay alive in the group. And they were just they were just more up for it than we were. They were Their pressing was very, very good, I felt, Lask. That was something I was impressed with. And they just they just looked more they just looked more up for it than we did. And I think that's that, that was concerning because, again, we keep saying it. This, it's the same old story with the fringe players, really. And the thing is, we say fringe players. It was not a full-strength team, but there was a few sort of first key players in there yesterday you got lights of son and dombele um hoybier as well these sort of guys that um it was only them three but if you look at the back four that it was dreadful with joe hart as well she really should have saved those first two goals especially the second one but as well the second one joe hart wouldn't even have to make a save if sanchez didn't make a, a, yet another mistake so it's it's the same story and i think um it's, it's just strange to see because you look at someone like Serge Aurier who has really stepped up his game this season because of that competition with Matt Doherty coming in. I think players like you look at Sanchez, Davies, these guys really need to take out a look at um, a leaf out of his book because it's you've got there's competition there for places. Someone like Sanchez, he know he knows he's on the fringes. He's um, behind um 22 year old Joe Roden who's came from the championship. He's behind him in the pecking order. So Sanchez, if he's gonna get if he's gonna have any chance to get back in the team, he really needs to step up his game. And these sort of Europa League games have been opportunities for him. But yet again. It's the same story. Another mistake. It seems like now he's making a mistake every um, every time he's playing. But look, on the, as a positive note, we're through to the knockout stages. We got we got the job done. It was it was it was job done yesterday. Um, in the end, so then um, that's a good thing. But look, it's it's again fringe players not some fringe players not taking their chances. And I think um, I wouldn't say it's anything to worry about in terms of sort of confidence going into Sunday. Um, but it's just the worrying thing is is that sort of we can't we can't rely on fringe players as as, as much as we would have um, hoped. Yeah, look, I, I, I did say it in the preview show for anyone out there who watched it that, um, look, it was never going to be an easy game as, as a lot of fans thought purely because they knew if they bet us yesterday that they still had a chance of getting out of the group. Um, and then like that, it still would have been down to us to beat Antwerp. So look, 
it, it, it's what we expected. They came out at us. They got at us early. Um, they were they were physical in there, and and they pressed us. They did look. They didn't give us a time on the, time on the ball. We were absolutely shocking in the first half. We we um we couldn't string any passes together, and just just the possession shot uh, stats and shots alone show it. Um, it was fifty six percent possession to them, forty eight percent or forty four percent to us, and then it was um. 14 shots for them on goals and then eight for us. And um, look, guys, it, it, in my opinion, it, it it's just not good enough, um, especially because, like, look, in, in terms of um, pedigree, these are teams we really should be rocking up and beating um, mm -hmm. without any hassle. Like, you see other teams putting out their, their, their reserve players, under-23 players, and they're getting the job done. So, for me, look, um, a lot of so, – a lot of, it's a lot of the usual suspects again. Um, it's it, it's the same same thing we, we we seem to be calling out every game, and um, these these guys playing and and look it's it's just not good enough. Um, and and Jose Mourinho's comments after the game, I actually want to know um what you make on them. Basically, he questioned the attitude of the players, and um that the group games in Europe League don't um, motivate the players. Um, what what what's your thoughts on that? I think he's right. To be honest, uh, like the, these the majority of the players in these in this team are. They're Champions League players. It's, it's used to what they're playing. And I, I don't think it's a criticism of the players. And I don't think it's a, a criticism even of his coaching staff or anything like that. It's it's a competition you don't want to be in, especially when you're at the level that Tottenham have been uh, in recent years. Uh, you know, it, it, it kind of, when you when a team like us go into this, it's kind of feeling like, okay, we're going to qualify anyway. Like, you know, we don't have to try too hard. Uh, I think we, we saw that against Antwerp. We saw that last night against Lask. Um, I, I don't think there's too much you can do about it. I mean, they know now going into the last game, if they want a, an easier draw, we have to beat Antwerp and we're at home. So you, you have to assume uh, we will get that one over the line, especially having 2,000 fans in the stadium as well. Uh, but yeah, no, I think Mourinho's spot on. And I think it's a, a it's a problem that every English team will have. Uh, you know, Leicester lost 1-0 to Zoria last night. And I know they rotated a bit, but they still had, still had a, quite a strong team out there. But yeah. it's, it's the Europa League group stage. I don't think any player is going to want to, uh, apart from players for like those really small teams, like Arsenal, I don't think any player is going to want to um, <laughs> go out and try and set the world alight in the Europa League group stage. And uh, Charlie, like just 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 on that, like um, who 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 do you think is directed at? Do you think it's directed at the likes of maybe uh, Gareth Bale, Lo Celso, players like that, or do you think it's directed at the squad as, as a whole, or do you think it's directed at the likes of Sanchez, Davies, Hart, Doherty? Um, a bit of both, I think. I think um, you can probably say that he was aiming at the likes of Lo Celso and um, sort of those guys. I mean, uh, it, I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. It's all it's all around, um, and I think um, again, it's it's um, as Matt said, it's it's um, sort of players in terms of what he said about motivation. Maybe that maybe that is part of it because, as you said, it, it is the Europa League group stage. The way the way we've been playing this season in the league, I think um, our team's definitely Champions League quality. Well, well, our starting eleven is anyway. But um, the thing is, again, as what my frustration is that the fringe players that you look at players like Sanchez Davies these guys are Europa League level players in my opinion um from what they showed yesterday and they should be taking their chances in these games to try and sort of prove a point and uh, maybe get better as a player overall and it's it's just it just doesn't make sense why I can understand why you look at players like maybe Undombele and La Celso maybe even Son I could understand why these guys aren't particularly motivated for Europa League but you look at these other guys you look at Davies Sanchez um, maybe even Matt Doherty um, after his performance yesterday these guys should should have no reason not to be motivated to try and prove a point and um, try and um, stake a claim to be part of that and um, first team in the Premier League. So look, in terms of the comments, I think um, it's probably a bit of both, to be honest. It's um, what Mourinho does. And I think him, he's probably right, to be honest. Just on that point yeah. there about Ben Davis, uh, I'm still going at some of his stats last night. He, like, he played the full game. He, he had a 58.8 .8 passing accuracy. Which is that absolutely dreadful? That's abysmal. That is abysmal. It's, it's so bad. He won. He was in seven duels. He only won three of them. He didn't have a single tackle in the entire game. That's shocking. <laughs> Do you know what it is with Ben Davis as well? I was saying to David off camera before, before sort of a few years ago. When, when he came in, when sort of like Danny Rose was injured, we could rely on him quite well defensively because he mm -hmm. was a, a very good defensive fullback. But now 
we've always known he's not he's not great going forward but now it's like he can't defend either that's like that's like how it he seems at the off. moment it mm. just it just doesn't it just really doesn't make sense and i'm, I'm really i was calling to be honest i was calling for a left back all summer and i'm i'm luck and luckily we did get regulon because apparently we weren't in for one um before yeah. sort of the opportunity with regulon so i'm so pleased we got regulon because i've been calling for a left back um all summer and i'm luckily luckily we got one which um which i think is a massive for us going forward this season yeah, for me, look, Davies is a player now that, um, look, I think I'm starting to speak for a lot of Spurs fans here that, um, look, I want them shipped out now and I'd rather bring back Sessi on a blood circling through in these, in, in, especially in these games, like, and start yeah. giving them their chance because, look, Ben Davies, he offers nothing to the team anymore. He, he, he He's useless going forward. He can't cross the ball. Like like Matty said there when he's passing, it, it's, it's absolutely shocking. Um, we used to be able to rely, rely on him defensively, like, for all his attacking flaws, we used to say, yeah, but he's a good defender. We can rely on defensively. Up for it defensively. And, and, and even that's gone. So, look, yeah. for me, I'd rather start blooding the likes of Sarkin. Even Harvey White can play left back. He has done for the youth teams. Um, yeah. or, or bring back Sessignon. Because, look, for me, this guy is finished. Um, just just before we start going through with the individual player performances, um, I just want to ask you guys, um, basically, do you think that was harsh on Winks and Deli Alley not to start last night considering the shift they put in last Thursday? Yeah, I, I suppose you could say so. Um, they, they were probably two of the best players in the pitch last uh, last week, including Gretz. Um, but I don't know. I think you could see from the lineup how much Mourinho wanted to win this game. And I know he said it in his pre-game press conference. He said, "You know, of course we got to win every game, but if, if we get a draw, um, we'll be okay with it because we do qualify." Uh, I think his response to this game <laughs> just shows us that wasn't true. But uh, yeah, like Europa League. It, it should be a competition for rotation. And I was only thinking there, like you saw the likes of um, Harvey White, Dane Scarlett, Jack Clark come on against Ludogratz as well. And they played really well. Perhaps they could have been the players who could have come on last night and taken the game to last because they're, they're the type of players who will value every single second they get on the pitch yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in professional football, especially in, in European competition. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, maybe we should have used more uh, fringe players than we did. And perhaps that could have been, you know, give, first of all, giving them a point to prove, but also, you know, Put it on people who who really wanted to to play for every second they had. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. Look, th these guys when they come on, like you said, any minutes they get, they want to make the most of it. You have seen how upset Dan Scarlett was when he missed that sh um, chance there mm. oh, last yeah. day. Even Harvey White when he had a shot on the edge of the box and it just went white. So look, these players are, are, are players that you could probably throw out there, and you know they're going to give it their all. You know they're going to run around. You know they're going to commit to everything. Mm -hmm. So look. I'm a bit disappointed that Antwerp is a must win, really, because, um, look, I would have rather um, play the likes of um, Harvey White, Sarkin, Scarlett, and maybe even Alfie Whiteman if if if, um, if called upon, because, um, mm. look, they're, they're players that you're going to get a lot more out of than, than some of the players like we've seen last night. And, and judging by Mourinho's comments, uh, Matty Hayes, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Well, what, what are you thinking, Charlie? Yeah, I have to say as well, I think it was, look, you could see Mourinho wanted to win that game yesterday by playing sort of a strongest team. And I think you you say the likes of Dane Scarlett, Harvey White, um, Jack Clark as well. I, I wouldn't, I, I'd be um, pro quite happy if these guys came in for um, the game against Antwerp. Um, even though it's a game we um, have to win to top the group, we're already qualified. And I think um, I think if, if these guys came in for it, they'd be motivated, they'd be raring to go and they'd take the game by the scruff of the neck. And you saw when Dane Scarlett came on, I was very, very impressed with him. Sort of his movement was very good. He had those chances, yeah. which to be honest, he could have scored, but still just his movement for one of the, for the first one, I think it was his movement to get in between the two centre-backs, I thought was very impressive for um, someone as young as him to come on. And I think... Um, I'm hoping we get to see these guys against um, sort of Antwerp because I think um, they probably deserve a chance. To be honest, the way that sort of the cameos we saw from them um, coming on um, against um, who is it, Luda Goretz. So I think um, yeah, hopefully we get to see more of them. Sorry, it's my fire alarm. Sorry. So I couldn't. I know. I know. My fire alarm. Oh, it's done. It's done. It's done. <laughs> Someone's born at breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that's what it is to be honest. <laughs> but look, like even even getting back on these young lads, like this result be a lot more easier to take, and it'd be a lot easier to see through knowing that these lads are out there rather than than the players that we did have out there, you know. But um, look, moving into individual players, Joe Hart, um, was it too shocking yesterday for me? Oh. Like for me, to be honest with you, I think if Gazanig was in there, I think he would have saved all three. Being honest, um. Mm -hmm. 
like even looking back at pre-season, Joe Hart has a serious problem from long-range shots. I don't know whether it's concentration. Oh, yeah, that, that Watford game, wasn't it, in pre-season? Where, mm. Yeah. It's, it's diving to his left as well, to be honest. He's always yeah. had, he's, And you see players now, whenever he's in goal, how many worldies have we conceded? Like, you look in the qualifiers against, yeah. I think, Maccabi Haifa, and I think there was one, and against the team we played from Macedonia. So, team, be, even yeah. the yeah, even these teams are starting to find out that if you take sh long range shots, it's sort of a weakness for Joe Hart. So it was very disappointing from him. And maybe look, Gazaniga, I've I've never been Gazaniga's biggest fan, but I still think I still think he um would have probably saved um those shots to be honest. Hmm. I think any <laughs> uh, I don't want to sound harsh on Joe Hart, but I think any professional yeah. keeper saves those. Um, look, I, I don't want to turn on Joe Hart uh, after one game. He's he's yeah. had some good performances. He even made some yeah. good saves last night. To be fair yeah. to him. But, he's good uh, in the first half, yeah. I thought he was yeah. the best player in that first half, <laughs> literally. But, I mean, that, that first goal, I think a lot of people are saying, oh, well, he, he couldn't get across, but he didn't move his feet fast enough. You know, it's no. a shot coming in from 30, 35 yards that, fair enough, it's right in the corner and there's a bit of movement on it, but there's not enough power in that shot that it should beat any uh, goalkeeper at the level that Joe Hart is and has been at throughout his career. Uh, I think he has to save that. And the second one, it's just such an unor unorthodox technique of trying oh. to save that by going oh. with his forearm. It, yeah. it was really strange, you know. Look, fair enough, if he wants to get something strong behind it, it was a powerful enough shot, but he should be able to keep that out with his hand. And aside from that, I don't think he offered too much in, the, in way of distribution or anything like that. He made one or two crucial saves in the first half, but I think he let himself down hugely with those uh, two goals he conceded. Yeah, for me, look, even if you've seen that on your local Sunday league team, you're still going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, it, for me, look, it, it, this player is getting um, a, nice, a, nice, a nice bit of wages every week, and it, it, it's absolutely shocking. It's shocking. Um, like I don't even think if we, I think I think if even if we had Alfie Whiteman in there he wouldn't have conceded them honestly it, 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 it's yeah. poor. Um, moving on to Matt Doherty, look this is this is a guy that um, look I I see a lot of, I see him getting a lot of stick on social media media and look I, I'm not I'm not too happy with him at the minute, but we still have to give him time. He is transitioning from a from a back five from a wing back to a back four to playing right back and it, it look it, it it is a completely different position. It's a completely different role. Um, mm -hmm. completely different things asked of him. Um, so, but look, if you look back on his campaign as a whole so far, look, it hasn't been the worst. He, he could have scored against everything. He has put in some good games. But uh, look, last night was very disappointing, especially that slip. Um, mm -hmm. Very disappointing. Yeah, he, he just didn't. He didn't look like a footballer last night. To be honest, it was everything he did seemed to go wrong. Uh, Kept slipping. I thought at the time <laughs> yesterday. Right. Yeah. Look. It's he does better when he's in when they're uh, playing more attacking games. You know when we do kind of play that left side of back four and he's right up there at the other side of the pitch, he does play well. And I don't think that's yeah. any surprise. And it's, it's certainly not a criticism of him because, as you say, David, it's what he's used to uh, playing in that right uh, right wing back role for Wolves. But he's had what is it three three months now, uh, maybe even a bit more, including pre season. Yeah. I think now is the time where, as you say, we should start asking questions. Uh, but then again, look, if, if this transfer doesn't go to plan with him, it was only fifteen million pounds, and it's certainly gotten the best out of Serge Aurier. Um, now, obviously, I, I do hope, as as an Irish fan and as a Spurs fan, I really do hope he turns it around. Uh, but if he doesn't, I, I wouldn't say it's the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. As well, like, yeah, I just want to add on that as well with Matt Doherty. I've, I've been one that sort of defended him as well, to be honest, because I've always said transitioning from a right wing back to a right back is a very, very different position. I've always, And that's why I've always defended him. But as Matt said, it's what, three months now. And it's starting, you're starting to ask a couple of questions now. And I think it was concerning yesterday. As I said, he kept he kept sort of um, slipping, I thought, at times, falling over um, and conceding throw-ins as well, I thought, a lot yesterday. And I thought it was just very, very poor from him yesterday. And I'm hoping that um, he's another player that knows that he's sort of losing his place in the Premier League team and he can step up in his games um, hopefully soon. So, yeah, it was it was just very disappointing. And I'm, I've been one that's defended him. And I'm hoping, I really do hope he turns it around because I've always rated him when he was at Wolves. I thought he was a really, really good fullback. So, I really hope he turns it around. Yeah, look, for me, he's a player. Um, look, we're starting to run out of excuses to defend him, to be honest with you. Um, mm. At the start of the season, we said it's his fitness, give him time. Once he gets fit, he'll be flying. Now, now we're starting to say, uh, um, oh, then, then he was out injured, he had the COVID, COVID, whatever else. And now we're starting to say that it's transitioning from a back five to a back four. So look, for me, he has until February to pick up his game and try and get, get a hold of the tactics. Because, um, hmm. look, as an Irish fan, as Matty says, I really do hope it works out for him because we have had some great Irish fullbacks at Tottenham over the years. And um, look, I, I really do hope it works out for him, but at the minute it's not going too well. 
So whatever's going on there, I really hope he just um, he just starts to knuckle down now and and really pushes on. Uh, moving centre backs, um, Tanganga and Sanchez. Uh, look, we'll start with the Tanganga because I know we'll have a lot to say on Sanchez. Um, look, he's a player that's coming back from fitness. Um, I, I wouldn't mm. take too much too much from last night's game. Um, we 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 know we can rely on Tanganga. We know what we're going to get from him. And um, yeah, for him, he just needs the game time to get back to the level he was at um, prior injury. So look, I, I'm not, I'm not going to um, call him out too much because he's a player I know we all like. Um, mm -hmm. Sanchez is another story. This guy for me, um, I, I want him gone now. I do. We've given him more than enough chances. Um, he's he's playing against uh, last, and he can't even he can't even defend or keep a clean sheet. He's passing his woeful as well, um, and he just panics. He just panics. Um, he, he's not good enough. For me now, I want him gone. Uh, uh, um, as soon as this group stage is over and done, I can't wait because I want Roden registered and um, see, to see a lot more of him because um, look, Sanchez is dead food out here. He's finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, last night was just kind of the final straw. Uh, he, he's not good enough. And look, he has been, he was good for us in the past. I think when he first came in, he was a bit, uh, a bit kind of unsure of himself and he's kind of started to come into his game then. But we know what Jose Mourinho thinks of him. You know, we targeted him in that uh, Europa League final back at Manchester United. Uh, I don't know if it's a tactical thing or, or what, but he just does not fit into this team, unfortunately. You know, he was our, our, our record signing for a while. Uh, and again, we've all wanted to work out, but unfortunately, I, I don't think it will. David, as well, just, just before I speak in the video, make sure to play the clip of what Marcelo did when I said we could have we had a, a choice between De Ligt and Sanchez. Just play that clip now because <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, look, my point on Sanchez, I've made my feelings very clear all across this platform. He's not good enough for us. It, I thought yesterday may have been the final nail in the coffin for him because yeah. mistake after mistake after mistake. Literally every time he plays, he makes a mistake. When was the last time we kept a clean sheet with him in the team? Um, sort of in the Premier League. I know against Ludogorets, but in the Premier League, when was the last time we kept a clean sheet with him in the team? And it's, it's just getting ridiculous now. When he first came in, I thought his first season was good, to be honest. For, his, for a first season, for a young defender coming in, he had a decent first season. And it's just for me, he's either got worse or he's stagnated. But if you stagnate, you go backwards. And that's what's happened with him because he's making the same mistakes as he did when he first came in. And you could understand it when he came in. But now it's just getting to a point where it's four years and he's get, he's um, and, a, and a guy we signed from a championship club who um, hadn't played a minute of Premier League football is getting selected over him. And that just shows you Sanchez has serious um, questions to ask because... For me, yeah, for me, as David said, it's time to go. And I and the thing is, in the past, I've defended him. But so far this season, I haven't been able to defend him. And um, it's just it's just got to a point now where time to time to cash in um, and hopefully reinvest in someone like Skriniar because um, Skriniar would um, definitely be a massive upgrade on Sanchez, that's for sure. Yeah, 100%. Look, um, for me, I, I don't think he's going to see Pat January personally. Um, I honestly think we will go all out for Skriniar, especially with Josie at the help purely because... Look, January is a time where we have to invest because I don't want to be looking back on this summer and saying, what if? I really don't. Um, so, look, Sanchez has to go. He's just not good enough at this level. Um, moving on to left-back, um, Davies, look, another player. Uh, another player. Matt's already given out the stats about stats, him. Stats, yeah. He, 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 he's, he's just not good enough for me. He, he's, he, he has to go as well. I want to see. I want to bring back Sessignon from his own deal. Uh, or I want Sarkin um, to be blooded in and given a chance, or Harvey White even at left back. Because look, Davies, um, look, let's face it, even under Pochettino's era when he was getting games, he still wasn't the best. He was still a player that, um, yeah, we may have been able to rely on him defensively, but any time he played, especially on that left hand side, he took away from our game purely because he can't pass the ball across the ball. He has absolutely nothing. So for me, he's another player mm -hmm. that's, that's just finished. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Sestian is after getting player of the month at half time. Yeah, uh, he's he's obviously doing really well over there. Uh, I I think uh, I understood anyway why he was loaned out because having brought in Regulon and, and Gareth Bale, uh, it was two players yeah. who primarily play in the positions that Sessignon you know wants to be on the pitch. So it was, it was going to be a bit difficult to get him in the team uh, while blooding in these new uh, these new signings as well. But I think next season Sessignon will be right back in the mix and Ben Davis could be could be off. Yeah, yeah, yeah as, as well. I think Davis is a guy I've always said in the past, he never offered us anything really going forward. But at least, at least in the past, we could rely on him defensively. He was a very good defender, I felt, in the past. Mm -hmm. But now, he can't do either. I feel like he's he's another one that's got a mistake in him. I'll be completely honest. Yeah. He's got, which is very, very strange for someone like him. Because if, like, as I said, he just now, 
I just don't see what he offers anymore, literally. And you say Sessegnon, he's do- yeah, I've said, I've heard he's doing very well over there in um, Hoffenheim. So I think he's a guy that I think next season when he comes back, he could definitely be well in that mix. Um, and then we could um, hopefully um, cash in on someone like Davis and then um, and then reinvest that money somewhere else because I think look, it's it's a guy he's again been here for quite a long time, and I think maybe it's just time to move on from someone like him. And I think again, it's a guy, it's a guy that. I say about selling, we say sell Sanchez, sell Davies. But the thing is, we I just don't understand why we've had problems sort of offloading players a lot um, in recent years in particular. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it will be the same with these guys if we um, try and um, offload them. But um, yeah, I want to know um, your opinions on that. Yeah, the reason why I feel like we've had uh, problems offloading these sort of players before is Pochettino didn't want it. It, it, it was a bond there. Yeah. They were all a family and he didn't want to mm. let them go. That, 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 that's, that's all it came down to. Make no mistakes, we could have sold these players. Pochettino didn't want it. He felt they were good enough. Now that we have a serial winner coming in the door, we can see they're not good enough, even though we already knew it anyway. Um, contradictory to what um, Pochettino was saying in the press. But look, I'll pass this one over to the transfer guru because he's your man. <laughs> here. Yeah, look, I, I think I, I've spoken about it a lot. There was a lot of passengers in that team um, that, that you know, Mourinho has, has gotten rid of straight away. You're looking, of course, Christian Eriksen. Uh, after after Inter Milan, Deli Ali, Harry Winks, Danny Rose, Ben Davis, all struggling for first team football. And Pochettino told us it was going to be a painful rebuild, but perhaps it was just a bit too painful even for him. Uh, he, he he couldn't make those tough decisions. And look, I know there was, uh, as far as we know, uh, an unwillingness from from Daniel Levy to back him in the transfer market. But I think Pochettino could have forced his hand by, you know, putting these players up for sale. Like you know, yeah. Ben Davis, so he he was better back then, but he he wasn't at the level. Uh, to, to be a starting left back in a team that want to be competing for the league title. Danny Rose in the exact same boat. Ericsson and Ali hadn't performed for about a year uh, at the end of Pochettino's tenure. And the, the the sad truth is we just didn't have any players to go in there and replace them. Um, and I think Sanchez now is starting to fall into that boat and Mourinho's not going to take any prisoners. Uh, I, as you say, David, I wouldn't be surprised if he's gone off in January. And for Milan Skriniar, you know, it, it remains the same. If we pay the money, he, he's our player. You know, Inter Milan yeah. aren't, aren't going to change their stance in it. The, the player is open to move to North London. I think if we can ship out Sanchez and maybe one or two others in the January window and fund that move for Skriniar, uh, it could be crucial for us in terms of a title challenge if we are still up there uh, come January. Yeah, fully agree with you. Um, look, a lot, of these, a lot of these players have to go. Um, they let us down time and time again. It's as simple as that's Boris fans. Now, look, moving on into the, the tree in the middle, uh, we'll talk about them as a whole because... Um, I was very disappointed last night. It was one we all yeah. we were all crying out for and all wanted to see. We thought it'd make us a lot more creative. Uh, it didn't happen. The only thing I will say is if we played that three with Regulon Bomb on one side, or you're up the other, Dyer and Toby, who can also pass the ball, um, and Harry Kane and the two wing backs or the two wingers flying in behind, because look, it does make their job a lot easier when you have the the better players around them and players that can also pass out from the back. Find you with your find you with a pass, so you're not running around after the ball for um for ninety minutes. But look, one thing I will also say, it also shows um how crucial the soccer role is in our team at the minute. Yeah, with, with, with your yeah. work rate, he's industrial, and um, he gets around the pitch. He likes to fly into tackles, and he doubles up and he helps out the defenders an awful lot. So um yeah, look, it was very disappointing. What do you make on it, lads? I I, I think for me last night anyway, we I think we saw why. We've only ever seen that uh, duo of Ndombele and Celso once before. Uh, look, obviously, Mourinho knows uh, knows this better than we do, and perhaps we kind of have to take note of the fact that he just is really unwilling to to use this duo. Uh, I'm kind of starting to think perhaps it could also be uh, just uh, a kind of reluctance to play La Celso and Kane in the same team because we know how creative La Celso can be, but it's kind of look like Harry Kane is that as weird as weird as yeah. it is to say it. He is that attacking midfielder in our team. And like 100% agree with you that Suzuko's role is so important. You know, for looking at our, our last two games in the league uh, against Manchester City, Suzuko was uh, a huge, huge player tactically for us, kind of dropping in uh, and marking Bernardo Silva when he tried to pull out wide to, to accompany Ferran Torres. And in that game against uh, against Chelsea, it was when Ben Chilwell started to drop in deep and Timo Werner was kind of picking up those positions uh, in, in the space kind of down the left-hand side. Again, it was Suzuko dropping back and, and, and taking that space away from him. So... Maybe uh, as as upsetting it would be to kind of realise this, perhaps we are just a, a, a defensive team and we need Ndamale, Hoybier and Sissoko in, in that midfield because, you know, Hoybier kind of tends to be that free man sitting in front of the defence, whereas Ndamale and Sissoko out of possession 
uh, a lot of the time do pick up uh, different players. You know, Bergwijn and Son even did it against City. So yeah. maybe that's just too too much of an attacking midfield for for our style of play now. Yeah, and as well, I just want to add as well, people, um, maybe that is the case. Maybe our style of play just doesn't suit that midfield trio. And I think the, what, what sort of wound me up a bit is there's fans, sort of particularly after the Man City game, complaining about the style of play. Listen, this style of play is under Jose Mourinho, a serial winner. And I, if, if, it, if it means we're going to have a great season and win stuff, I'm all for it. It doesn't matter what style of play it is. So for me, if this is the style of play going forward, which Mourinho wants to implement, then, then we have to trust it because Mourinho is a serial winner. He's been there. He's done it. So we have to trust it if that's, um, if that's, what, if that, if that's what it's going to be. Um, so I think, yeah, if that's going to... if that um, I'm looking forward to this season, definitely, um, even with that style of play, because Mourinho, serial winner, he knows he knows what he's doing. So I think fans um, just need to trust him a bit more. Yeah, yeah, look, how many times how many times have we seen time and time again where Mourinho has been on the top of the league with a team and they're always talking about another team who's playing better football and Mourinho is always sitting there saying, yeah, sure, look, we're 10 points ahead. So do you know what I mean? So look, it, like, like you said, if it's a style that's going to win us Cups, and which means I can jump around with strangers and enjoy enjoy success. I re- I'm, I'm all for it. Do you know what I mean? I, exactly. I am all for yeah, it. I'm for it. But, yeah. I've always, the thing is, on, yeah, go on, go on. Sorry, just touching on what Matty was saying. Like, um, I do think it is a midfield tree, personally, that he does want to use. I think mm-hmm. he's just struggling on how to implement it, personally. Well, hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope that's yeah. the case. And just, just looking at your tongue in Dumbley's numbers. He's on the pitch for 65 minutes and he only uh, attempted 18 passes, which is absolutely nothing. It shows how, how much he struggled to get on the ball in midfield. But on, on the flip side of that, it just shows the improvement he had. With those 18 passes, he created one chance, which is 50% of our chances, and he got the only assist in the game as well. So, and he won the penalty. And, and he did, yeah. Um, not the best performance from him, but I suppose when he did get on the ball, he was effective last night. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Look, even though even though it wasn't hundred percent effective, he still looked like one of our best players out in the field out there for me. Mm. Um, so yeah, look, um, look, this midfield tree, I hope it does work out because it is our most creative tree. Um, but look, yeah, it, it was very disappointing. I, personally, I don't think you're going to see this tree against Arsenal. I think you will see the Celso drop and Sissoko back in there. Yeah. Um, look. Yeah. Now moving on to the the, the front tree. Um, Son, Bale, or Bale on the left, Son up top, and Lucas on the right. Um, Lucas is very disappointing. This was a player that me and Charlie were speaking about on the preview show, saying that if he did have a good game tonight, he could be in contention for um, Arsenal on Sunday. And look, it's not going to happen now. He he was absolutely anonymous last night. He's another player that, look, he, he plays in patches. He'll, he'll have, he'll have yeah. a golden patch where, where he's absolutely superb. And then, then he lacks creativity, but we're all praising him for his defensive work, his work off the ball. But look, he's a player that's just not consistent. Uh, he's not. He's, he's just not consistent with his end product. It, for me, for me, he's just um, he's a player that I think will be phased out on the Mourinho eventually. You can't you can't have two two right wingers there, Lamella and and Mora, um, both doing the same job to the team, offering um, great defensive work. Great running, um, great great tracking players running after the ball, and that you can't have the two of them. So one of them has to go. And for me, I think it will be Lucas just because um, Lamella has that um, that bit extra bite in him, and he he, mm-hmm. he is a used to Mourinho. Mourinho loves a player like that. Yeah, well, I think we definitely missed Lamella last night. Uh, it's the type oh, of yeah. game where he'd be getting stuck into the defence and he'd be he'd be causing them problems, making them think about it a bit more than uh, Lucas would. And as, as far as Lucas goes, there's only so there's only so long he can live off that hat trick in Amsterdam. You know, he, yeah. he's never been a consistent player. He's never been. Kind of the, the player that you really want to see on the team sheet, you know, it's just been if someone is injured or if we're trying to rotate, he said, Oh, yeah, just throw Lucas in there, you know, he'll do a job. Um, yeah. but he just doesn't do that job anymore. He has, of course, he has his good attributes, he's a very, very quick player. Uh, he, he, he'll he run all day for you, and his defensive work rate is good, but that's not enough to keep you in this team. Yeah, I have to agree as well, to be honest with Matt. I just want to add a point as well. Lucas Moura, he's a guy that, yes, you say the hat trick in Amsterdam, he can only live off that for so long. And I think, um, again, yesterday, he um, he just wasn't good enough yesterday, I felt. I thought, again, the thing is with Lucas, he's a very tactically disciplined player. So he'll do what, he'll do what's asked of him. He'll track back. He'll um, follow. He'll follow the instructions. But the thing is with him, just... Not enough quality, and if you're playing, if you're if you're playing for a team like us that's looking to go on and win things, every winger needs to have end product. 
all our yeah. like both our wingers need to have end product. And mm -hmm. I think with Lucas, it's just it's just very frustrating because he's a guy that he as as David said, he can have sort of patches where he scores a few goals and stuff, but he just doesn't do it on a consistent basis. And and yeah. that, that that's just the thing. That's just he's just a very very frustrating player to watch at times. And I felt yesterday, me and David were saying because he has got a few goals in the Europa League lately. We were saying if he gets if he puts in another good performance, maybe he could be in contention to start against Arsenal. But I think to be honest, that's just pretty much out of the question. I think. To be honest, yeah. it's going to be it's going to be Bergvan. I think Bergvan looked good when he came on. I felt um, his sort of cameo. He, I thought he looked lively. So I think, yeah, I think mm -hmm. it will be Bergvan on Sunday. Yeah, look, just just before fans do stats for 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 about Lucas because I know a lot of fans do um, love these players purely for sentimental reasons. Look, I'm with you. I do love him for his hat trick against Ajax. He um, he brought mm -hmm. us to a Champions League final. But look, at the end of the day, I'm sick of not winning trophies. I'm sick of it. I actually want to start winning trophies and. If we want to move forward and start winning trophies, we can't just be um, we, we we can't just keep these players around purely because of sentimental reasons. Um, we, we just can't do it. I, I I want to win trophies now, so we, we we've gone too long without winning trophies. So the likes of these players, look, people may think it's harsh, but at the end of the day, if we want to be successful and we want to pull in Mourinho's direction, they have to go. It's as simple as that. Now, yeah, um, definitely. Moving, mo moving on to Son, look, he's a player. I really didn't want to play. I wanted him to progress it. But he, he got a goal. He looked, um, you, you, you can always lie on Sonny for a goal. Um, it was still, still a bit disappointed for me yesterday. Um, like that pass that Bale, Bale gave across the box for me. Yeah. Son, Son, Son shouldn't be ahead of the ball. He really shouldn't. He should be timing his run. But also, it's, it, it, it's a chance that if, if Son was on the, in Bale's position, he would have took the shot and buried it. Same as Harry Kane. Um. What, what do you make on some performance yesterday? I, I think he showed yesterday how much he needs um, that creative spark behind him. And that, that's not a criticism of him. You know, he's he's a player who, you know, he makes us runs in behind. He's, he's on the defender's shoulder all the time. Naturally, he's going to need someone to give him that football. You know, he's, he's even in the Premier League this season, he's not been the player who'd, you know, he'd drop back, he'd pick up the ball and try and create something himself. He's kind of relied on Harry Kane to, to do that for him. And again, not a criticism. I've never criticised Son, yeah. especially this season. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that chance, I think he just wasn't expecting the pass and he kind of just thought, I don't know, maybe run into goal to, pick, to get the ball out of the net or whatever. But he, he should have been behind the ball, even if he wasn't expecting the pass, if he wanted to rebound to make sure he was onside. Uh, it, it was certainly a weird one, but uh, clinical. When he got his one chance, he put it away. Uh, yeah. But not, not his best performance. And over to you, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. The thing is with Son, I felt yesterday, playing out of position, I think if we knew Kane and Vinicius weren't going to be involved. So for me, it should have been Gareth Bale down the middle and Son out wide because Son's just not suited because we kept lobbing the ball up to him. And what's what can he do? What what can he do in his power mm -hmm. to sort of in that? Because he's just going to get bodied by the defenders if he's centrally. But when he's out wide, he's a lot more effective. And I think that's why Gareth Bale should have been the one centrally because he has he has he's he's more suited to that role. It's not his natural position, but he is more suited. And I think that, that's that's what the main problem was with Son yesterday. It's not a criticism yeah. of him, but it's, it's just, again, it was just him being played out of position. But as you said, it's Son. He's still got his goal. And that just shows how much of a clinical finisher he is mm. just just on the Vinicius thing um, I did have a fan that commented on the preview show saying how could I have uh, Vinicius in my starting 11 um, look that was recorded before any team yeah. news came out I, I, I will just let you know that but um, look moving on to Gareth Bale for me he's been very disappointing in these Rob League games um, look he, he got a penalty yesterday he, he put it away well but um, he's a player that we have really all come to expect more of, especially in these games. Like, I'm not being funny. He should be even even a fifty percent Gareth Bale should be a head and shoulders above these guys. He really should be. Um, yeah. For me, he's just lacking that bit of um, explosiveness that he did used to have, where he used to be able to kind of cut in, you know, use his power and his strength and have a shot. Um, for me, it's just not there at the minute. Um, and uh, look towards the towards the end of the game, he was getting better. But just 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 mm. over the Europa League campaign as a whole, for me, he has been very disappointing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, go on, Matt. Sorry. Say, no, go ahead. You can take oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I think it's it's weird with Bale because you'd expect him to sort of sort of be a class above everyone in these types of games in the Europa League. And I think, as you said, we don't know what it is. I've always said it's a fitness thing with him. He's still gaining fitness, but you'd think against like opposition that we've been playing in the group stage that he'd sort of be a little bit more effective. And I think you have to say um, it has been a, it has been a little bit um, disappointing from him so far. I think we're starting to see a, a bit more. 
I don't know if effort is the word, but he's like the first couple of games he played in the Europa League, he was getting the ball and he was passing it back to the fullback or he's yeah. passing it into midfield. But I think we are starting to see a bit more kind of he was trying to take on a man. I think he had one or two in the in the first half where he did manage to, to beat the fullback down the right. Which look, I suppose the 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 least we can ask for is is progress, and he's shown a bit of that. But it's it's really starting to frustrate me the way he's standing over every yeah. free kick within forty yards of the goal, and he's blasting it into the wall. You know, every single one. Yeah. yeah. Look, I know he, he's he's a, a fantastic free kick taker, and he has been one of the best uh, in the world in recent or maybe the last I don't know six seven years. But I don't think him blasting every free kick into the wall is going to do anything for his confidence. Um, I think we start need, we need to start better utilizing those set pieces because you know last night we could have done with a goal or two from them. Uh, but yeah, look, I think we're starting to see a bit more from him. He's he's looking more positive on the ball. Uh, the fitness I think is still lacking. That that as you're saying, David, that explosive uh, burst of pace isn't there just yet. But we have you would assume two years from on loan at Real Madrid. If we can get six seven months of prime Gareth Bale, I think it's all worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I, I fully agree with you on that. Um, look. He's a player that it's a tough one because he's been out of the game for so long. Like with, with Real Madrid, kind of not not turning up to training and not playing games. And look, a lot went on there and it did affect him. But we have seen him at Wales produce. So for me, it, for me, it's a tough one. I think, I think, I, th- I think for me, he just. Um, I think, I think we need to wait till after the New Year basically to, to see the best Gareth Bale. And if that is the time he steps up, I'm all for it because it's going to help us and drive us forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, no, no, look, um, last but not least, we'll have just a little talk about Mourinho. Do you think he got do you think he got it all wrong last night? I, I think it would be harsh to put it on him. Um I think it first of all, in order for it to pay off the the strong the strength of the lineup that we put out, um, we would have to win that game. You know, anything less than a win, all of a sudden you're you're thinking it, it wasn't worth putting out those big players. But I think putting out those big players, Mourinho has a right to expect them to, to beat Lask. Uh, now, of course, it comes back to that issue with the, the motivation, the European group stage and all that. Uh, maybe, as you mentioned, he got his subs a bit wrong. Perhaps it could have been better bringing on those younger players to, to have that hunger back in the team. Uh, he brought Deli Alli on, who I just want to give another mention to, I thought was was good for the, the eight minutes mm-hmm. that he got, which I think was it, was it was unfair, but he came on, he was positive, he was good on the ball. Of course, he got the goal from the penalty spot. Um, I, I was really impressed with his confidence putting that penalty down the middle. Uh you know, if you miss a penalty down there, it's, it's the worst thing in the world. He's confident. Uh, and look, he, run, he did it. He, he got the goal. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, look the run. prime <laughs> example of that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, I think it would be harsh to to blame it on Jose Mourinho, but I I, I do think he he needs to take uh, some responsibility for it, but not as much as the players that were on the pitch. Yeah, what what I will say as well about Mourinho is. I think it was more sort of the players on the pitch as we talked about the fringe players and stuff. But I think one of the faults of Mourinho was the f- playing Son out of position. Son should not be down the middle. It should be, if it's not Kane, if it's not Vinicius, it should be Gareth Bale down the middle, not Son. I think, um, look, Son, he's he's very effective out wide. And this isn't a criticism of Son. I just think he was being played out of position. I think that that's probably the, that's probably, um, the fault that Mourinho has yesterday. But I think apart from that, I think he was let down by certain individuals, again, let me add, and by the likes of, as we said, Sanchez Hart as well. So I think it's not entirely his fault, but I think there was maybe one or two faults in there from him yesterday. Yeah, for me, I think he missed the trick not playing Bale down the middle and not playing Son out left. I, I, I don't understand why he played Son up top. But we've seen Son try to deputise for Kane up top before and it just, it doesn't work, lads. It doesn't work. Uh, Son's best position is on the left. Mm-hmm. Um, he played. He played a mid three of Heiberg, Lacelso, and then Dembele. And for me, that's that. That's a midfield three I would like to see in our first team with the rest of the first team players around him, rather than last night. I think he was asking for an awful lot, especially with some of the players that just make their job harder. Um, but look, for me, he got his subs right. Bringing on Bergvine, Bergvine, um, he, he done well. Um, he improved the team and bringing Deli Ali on as well. I thought it was very harsh actually on Ali not to start the game. Um, yeah, I think, I think maybe so. probably, I, th- I, I think probably we could have rested on them belly and put the cell in beside um Heiberg and played Ali just just in behind, um, just in front of them in behind Sun. Um, it didn't happen for me. I, th- I think he got his tactics wrong, especially in the first half. And then look, he got it into half time. He absolutely dri- he absolutely ripped him apart in the dressing room. Um, mm. And look, it didn't really improve until the substitutions came on. So for me, he does like you see the comments he made. For me, he does have to take a bit of the blame. Um, it, 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 
look, these are teams we should be winning. We're all disappointed. Um, you look back on the Europa League campaign so far, for me, it has been a bit lacklustre. But at the same time, it's been very hard to be excited about purely because of the calibre of the teams we're playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But look, moving forward, we, we just have to be Antwerp out of the group first. Um, we, we should get an easier draw then. Um, so look, just, look, I just fall on Spurs fans not really be too disappointed about last night. And, we got uh, the job done in the end. We Monday. got the result, yeah. Um, just have you sent anything you want to add on the get for the game on Sunday just before um, we end? Sunday, <laughs> we have to beat them, man. I'm not, yeah. I just can't deal with losing to them. We have to beat them. And I expect us to because of the way we've been playing and the way they've been playing. So, but you just, the thing yeah. is, you just know Arsenal are going to turn up. So the thing is, we have to turn up. And I think if both sides turn up, I think hopefully our quality should hopefully um, do enough, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> a lot of hope in there. Um, yeah. yeah, no, look, we lost to Antwerp. We had a, a good reaction to that. We won five games in the bounce after it before the draw against Chelsea on Sunday. I think we're going to see another reaction. And even aside from, from that side of things, we're going to see a stronger uh, team with more quality in it against Arsenal on Sunday. Now, I'm hoping they get a bit of complacency from their win against Rapid Vienna last night. Uh, yeah. We're going to have fans <laughs> back on the ground. That's going to be a big boost for the players. Um, I think that's what carried Arsenal over the line uh, so much last night as well. And we saw... You know, around the country in the EFL on Tuesday and Wednesday and uh, teams just uh, performing because the, the fans are back on the ground. And I think we're going to see the same from Spurs. I'm confident. I've, I've no doubt we're going to go out, we're, we're going to beat them. It might be difficult. You know, as you say, Charlie, they're going to show up. It might be a tight game. But uh, I think we'll, we'll come out of that with the three points and stay on top of the table for another week at least. Yeah, for me, look, last night's result could be a blessing in disguise because it just could, uh, could give us extra motivation and... And basically, um, give the players a kick up the arse going into the Arsenal game. And basically, that it's not, it's not just going to be a walk in the park. Even though I honestly do think we are going to beat them convincingly. Um, and as well, I'm actually delighted they won last night, and we kind of stepped up because um, look, it gives them a false sense of um, false sense of hope going into the game. Really, for me, because um, mm. even here, some of their fans there after the game last night, yeah, um, that, that we could compete with them now the weekend. Uh, after beating after beating a, a, a nobody really, do you know what I mean? So look, I'm delighted because it'll give them um, false confidence. So I'm happy it turned out the way it did last night. Mm -hmm. um, look, lads, thanks very much for today. I really do appreciate it, um, guys. Um, make sure you get over and check Charlie's live stream there later on. Um, Coming it's, in it's ten minutes. Ten minutes. Show. Yeah. In ten minutes, it's going to be a good yeah. show. And make sure you get over and check Matty Hayes um, and his um, debate, his um, podcast, the debate for the title. Um, which with Redman TV and a couple of others there, it's that's sure to be a good show as well. And also, just for me, make sure you look out for my um, Arsenal preview with um, We Are Tottenham TV. That'll be dropping at about four or five o'clock today. So make sure you look out for that. That'll be a good one as well. And thanks very much, lads. Um, in Spurs, in Jose, we trust. Come on, you Spurs. Go on, come on, you Spurs. Yeah.